Okay, so what do we need to do now that I've actually finished doing this animation is I need to select all of this and copy it. That's on my last slide. Go to the first slide and do paste, so I have it pasted in. And then when I do my animation for this first slide, I actually start with what is there on the last slide to get started. But what's happened there is that it's gone underneath rather than gone on top. So what I need to do is I need to uh, <coughs> have these things I've got selected here, have those sent to the back. So let's go to Arrange Menu and Send to Back. Back to the start of the animation now. And if I play it now, we'll see that that goes over the top of the one underneath. Then what I have to do is I have to take this one here, do a copy of that, go to scene 2, get to the start of the animation there and paste it in. So now when I do this animation, hang on, let's make sure that's at the back first of all, do a range, send to back. So when I do this animation I press play, away it goes. And the same thing's going to have to happen with this one here. Select my three parts of this animation and do a copy. Go to the next slide. Bring it to the start. Everything's out of the way. Do a paste. And then again, I have to make sure it's set to being at the back of the animation. Let's do our uh, animation. And we've got that sliding across the top of the one underneath. This time I want to select our three parts of that there. Command and copy. Go to the last section. Go to the start. Do Command V. Paste that in. So let's have a look in preview to see what we've got so far. That's our first scene. That's our second scene. Our third scene is a bit slow, and then we've got our last scene, and then it repeats. So, nearly finished, we've got a bit more to do on it yet, but it's getting there. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to have this so that it um, slides in from the uh, right. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move these off to the right, put them outside of the screen, press our record button. So this is going to be our starting point and press the shift key down so it comes in directly from the right and it's going to go as far as there and stop. And you can see that they actually started at the beginning of the timeline and we don't want it there, we want it to start at three seconds in but don't worry we can change that. All we need to do is to select our two bits there. The first bit is when the first photograph has slid all the way in then we're going to have our box slide in first of all. Let's grab that and move it over. We need to have this lining up exactly with the other one, the box. And I think what I'll do as well is with our green background, let's not make it uh, completely opaque. Let's have it and make it so that it's got some opacity. There, that's better. Let's get the scene back to the start and play it over. So our photo comes in there from the left and then when it's in, this comes in from the right. Not bad, eh? We could do it if we wanted to so that these two things are going to be opaque until it gets to a certain point within that, but let's leave that like that for the moment. On slide number two, I've decided to go for a different sort of text area. This is just a text area that I've been able to uh, say what background I want with it and the border I want around it. Okay, there's our 100 opacity there. And opacity of zero there. So again, this kind of not worked out quite that right because it's still, this is a starting point, this is an ending point, although it's further down the line there. What you can do is you can take that and move this, drag it along like that. 
So we've got 100% uh, opacity there and uh, zero over there. So when we uh, go to the start of the slide now and we play our animation, our two bits slide in from the sides and then we have text. The background and a border set there. And you see with this border I've given it a style of a ridge. I could have uh, given it a groove or I could have given it an inset. I think the ridge style is probably the nicest. It gives it a slightly sort of 3D sort of dimension to it. And then it will go on to our next slide, which is slide number four. So the one thing that you need to know is about how to get your slideshow to go from one scene to the next. And if you open up the scene inspector, you can see quite easily how you do that. Okay, so if I've got uh, number three, I'm going to want it to go to number four next. So what I do is I go to the animation timelines of the scene inspector and I tell it to jump to scene. I can tell it to play the timeline, run a JavaScript or go to a URL if I want to. But in this case we're telling it to jump to scene and the next scene is the one we want it to go to. We've got a choice of transitions from instant, crossfade, swap and a few others there. And then on the final one, this is our number four, we could have it go to the first scene. So animation complete, jump to the next scene or to the first scene if we were on the last one. That's how easy it is to make yourself a HTML5 banner using photographs and also to be able to add to it some text and some extra bits sliding in from the top, bottom, left or right or wherever you want them to come in from. So have some fun, go and have a play with that application called Hype. Now if you haven't done so already, go and click on the like button to like this video if you've found it any use at all and why don't you subscribe to the channel so that any time I bring something new out you'll be the first to hear about it. Bye bye now, until next time.